Bonnie Foley Wong is a new mom, and she is the founder of Peak Ventures, an impact investment firm, and the founding investor of Peak Fund, a BC-based early-stage impact fund, and she'll maybe tell you all about what that means. Previously, she worked with companies such as Spring Activator, um, Invoke Labs, and Van City, connecting entrepreneurs to resources and capital and connecting investors to opportunities. So please join me in welcoming Bonnie Foley Wong to the stage. Okay. <laughs> I'm the daughter of Chinese immigrants. I'm a CBC, a Chinese-born Canadian. Um, and as a kid, I was really shy. I found it really hard to fit in uh, to communities and play on the playground. And there's a, there's a word, a Chinese word, that described, um, described kids like me. I was, I'm a juk sing, which is in reference to bamboo and the nodes of the bamboo stalk. It's actually solid wood in between where those knuckles are, so you can't quite get from one node to the other. And it was slang to mean I was not quite Chinese, not quite Canadian. I've lived uh, in six different cities on three different continents and have had four different careers. So in doing all that and all those changes, I got um, a bit better at learning how to fit into new communities. My first job was as an accountant, as an auditor specifically. I was that person that showed up once a year for two weeks bugging the accounting department for paperwork that they hadn't seen for 12 months. Um, I interrupted people's work and so I had to find a way of making friends with the accounting department and building rapport pretty quickly. So that was the first step to helping me come out of my shell and not be so shy. But one of the biggest changes in my career is actually a career change and a city change. I moved to London in 1999, and I became an investment banker. I didn't really intend to become an investment banker. I was really interested in how investment decisions were made with money, and I ended up in investment banking. And it, I was a fish out of water. It's a male-dominated environment. Um, I was you know, a little bit more social, but still quite shy. I was surrounded by men that were really aggressive and all they wanted to talk about was the deals they were doing and how much money they were going to make. The guys that I worked with actually expressly said they didn't want to know about your kids or what you were doing on the weekend. All they wanted to do was talk about the deal. And there's me. Um, and I was the only woman in a, in a team of 10 men um, trying to my, find my way in this new industry. In six months, within six months of that new job, um, I closed my first deal and nego negotiated successfully with my client. So I started to build more confidence and I even started to become a bit more aggressive. I think the guys that I was working around me, that aggressiveness was starting to rub off on me and it felt quite good. Um, but the real turning point um, was one day I was feeling miserable in the office. Uh, the relationship I was in was not going well, and I just, you know, was just having the sort of day where I had to be at work, but um, really didn't want anyone to talk to me. And my boss at the time asked me, you know, what's wrong? And I told him, like, nope, you don't want to hear about it. Something going on in my personal life. You know, it's about a guy. She's not going well. Like, leave me alone. It'll pass. But he kept pressing me and insisting, you know, what's wrong, tell me. So I told him, I was dating an Irish guy, you know, it, we had just broken up, it hadn't gone well. And he proceeded to put on the worst fake Irish accent <laughs> and start teasing me and tried to make me laugh. And from that point forward, the dynamic in the team changed. We actually became a bit more human. We actually cared a little bit more about each other. We started to hang out more and we actually became friends. So fast forward a bit, um, as my career experience um, increased and I started to become more confident, I wasn't only just trying to fit into communities, I started to be able to build community. And this is what I'm doing now, and I think I'm a, a bit of a glutton for punishment. I went from one male-dominated environment to another. Uh, I work in an industry specifically on the investment side of investing in startups. Um, technology startups in particular. And in this industry, um, 
I work with mainly angel investors, so individual investors, as well as organizations invest. You might refer to as venture capitalists. And in the angel investor community, on average, only 10% are women. It spiked up to about 20% at, at one point, but it's still quite a low percentage. In venture capital, it drops even lower. Only 5% of venture capital firms are led by women or have women in their teams. And so I set out to do something differently. I start to convene events, bring people together, start to build this community and invite more women in. I wanted to bring this sense of community for people like you and me to the investment industry. And so I started a fund with nine other women, two other men. There's 12 of us all together. Uh, of those 12, eight are moms. And we started a small fund that has invested in three women-led businesses, one of which is My Best Helper, led by Alex Greenhill. Whoops, I gave it away. Um, in 2014, I felt like I'd hit my stride. Uh, in October 2014, the fund launched. And it wasn't the only thing I was birthing. 25 days later, in November 2014, I gave birth to my daughter. And it was amazing. Um, but I'll be honest, I felt like I had fallen off a cliff. Um, I was cut off from my community. I didn't see anyone for the longest time. The only people I saw were my husband and my daughter. And I felt, um, I felt really alone. And I, my, my husband is a stay-at-home dad. There was a presumption that I would go back to my business. And so I didn't feel like I fit in in the mommy and baby groups because it was my husband that was the primary caregiver and I didn't fit into the business networking groups. And I wasn't quite sure whether I was supposed to le lean in, like Sheryl Sandberg suggested, or whether it was more a case like Anne-Marie Slaughter said, you know, we can't have it all. So I was in this fog um, and just felt really alone. And what I did three things to help me get out of this um, haze. The first thing was get out of the building, which is actually a phrase borrowed from the startup world. You know, it didn't matter if I didn't quite fit in. I just went out and caught up with friends. Didn't matter if they didn't have kids. Didn't matter if they were moms with older kids. Didn't matter for guys. I just got out and hung out with whoever wanted to spend time with me. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing was I stopped worrying about trying to fit in. Even if that meant I was ambitious career woman on one day and mom on the next day. And the third thing was I got used to being by myself because I realized I'm a new me. I'm not really the same person I was before. And I had to spend time to get to know me again, to like me again. And it's really once we know and like ourselves, we can actually go back out there and be uh, a participant in community. My 15-year-old niece, uh, gave me some wise words, like she might have actually been trying to teach me this lesson really early on. Um, she had a homework assignment to write a thesis statement about conformity. And she said, you know, it's all right to want to try to fit in, but really, we just have to be ourselves. Thank you.